Clinical evidence has demonstrated that maintaining proper patient fluid volume during surgery can help minimize recovery time and improve outcomes long after the patient leaves the operating room. This graphic describes the concept of an optimal volume administration range and that excessive or insufficient volume administration may result in increased morbidity. Perioperative goal-directed protocols using flow-based or effective parameters such as cardiac output, oxygen delivery, or venous oximetry can help assure the adequacy of volume administration. Multiple organ systems are affected by the adequacy of volume administration. The gastrointestinal tract, for example, is greatly affected by excessive or insufficient volume administration. When properly hydrated, gastrointestinal tissues are well perfused and receive adequate oxygen delivery, ensuring good bowel function. This is especially important when recovering from GI surgery. However, if the patient is administered with excessive volume, the GI tract is at risk of becoming edematous. This swollen tissue opens the possibility of stress to the suture line and the potential for anastomotic leaks. A patient with insufficient volume runs the risk of inadequate cardiac output, or hypoperfusion. A hypoperfused bowel may encounter immotility and an ileus formation. In addition, hypoperfusion raises the risk of tissue breakdown and anastomotic leaks at the suture line. The kidneys are especially sensitive to excessive or insufficient volume administration. When functioning normally, kidneys cleanse the blood of impurities, while encouraging healthy urine output. Hypoperfusion can lead to a decreased blood flow, or hypovolemia, as indicated by decreased urine output and increased concentration of urine. This can lead to renal ischemia and acute kidney injury. Conversely, a positive fluid balance can elevate venous pressures affecting outflow, increase intracapsular pressure, and subsequently decrease renal blood flow in GFR. Renal injury caused by excessive or insufficient volume administration may be temporary or permanent, sometimes requiring pharmaceutical support or even dialysis. If permanent injury occurs, this will significantly compromise quality of life and cost of care while increasing risks of complications. In the respiratory system, the lung's ability to oxygenate blood is critical to overall oxygen delivery to the tissues and resulting organ function. Normal diffusion of oxygen through the alveolar capillary membrane where it binds with red blood cells for transportation throughout the body is the key to proper arterial oxygenation. Although occurring less often, significant over-administration of fluids can profoundly affect the lung's ability to oxygenate blood. Airways swell, fluid fills the alveoli, and the alveolar membrane thickens, impeding oxygen's ability to diffuse into the bloodstream and bind with hemoglobin. Excessive volume administration results in compromised oxygen delivery to the tissues, potential increased need for therapeutic oxygen, and possibly increase time on mechanical ventilation. Traditional vital signs and right heart pressures are poor indicators of the patient's fluid responsiveness. In fact, 50% of patients given fluids do not show an increase in stroke volume, leaving the patient at risk for excessive or insufficient volume administration. Dynamic indicators, such as stroke volume variation, or delta changes in stroke volume with fluid challenges, or passive leg raising help assure the appropriateness of volume therapy, mitigating the risks associated with inappropriate or unnecessary interventions. Failure to assure adequate perfusion during surgery can have long-lasting consequences in post-operative recovery. One such consequence is surgical site infection. Insufficient volume administration may lead to tissue hypoperfusion which restricts the delivery of oxygen, nutrients, and defense mechanisms, increasing the likelihood of surgical site infection. Surgical site infections may result in additional treatment requiring extended patient care, antibiotics, pain control, and possibly debridement of the wound. The risk of surgical site infections may be mitigated 
by optimal volume administration through perioperative goal-directed therapy, which promotes tissue perfusion and healthy wound healing.